Hello, so this is a review of solving uh, equations, combining like terms, in order of operations. This is all Algebra 1 skills that we always need. So the top is always a good explanation of order of operations, but you might remember this as PEMDAS. Remember, multiplication and division are the same. Addition and subtraction are the same. So you read them left to right. So for each one of these worksheets, there's always a reteach, which I am going to talk through these examples. So in number one, again, I multiply first, then I add, and then I would subtract. For the second one, there is that exponent, which is four times four, which is 16. Then I subtract, even though there is an addition in there, but the subtraction comes first. And then I would add, and I would get four plus three is seven. In the third one, I would have to divide first in the middle, then I add, and then I subtract. So you always have to remember multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. It's whichever one comes first. If there's only multiplication and division in the problem. So I want to highlight this a little bit more. There's perfectly good examples in the top. I'm going to run through a couple of these, like number nine. You'll notice has division, then followed by multiplication. So I do the division first, and then I multiply, then I would add, and then I would subtract. So you always have to do it in that order, in the order that it comes. So in this case, the multiplication and division are separated by that subtraction. So I can actually do them at the same time because they're separated. And then I would add the 3 and the 15, and then subtract that 4 and get 14. In the second, in the number 8, there are two exponents, so I do them, and then I multiply, and then I can combine those. So remember, you're always doing that same process over and over. For all these problems, remember to show your work. So I've split up the work here. So you're going to do three of the top six, two of those middle four, and then do both of those word problems. On the next page, again, do three of the six on top, three of the six on the middle, and then just do one of those 16 and 17, combining like terms. So in our next worksheet, it's just a review of solving. So solving equations is just drawing the line through the equal sign and getting the variable alone. So again, this is a review of algebra. So six of the 12 on top, one of those first two. Then you will have to do word problems. So do top, two of the four on top and two of the three on the bottom. To remember how to solve for a, a variable, some of you need it, some of you don't, but we are going to always combine our x's first. So I have to move the 3x over to the other side by subtracting it. For the second problem, I'm actually going to add the 4x to the negative 10x. The reason why I'm going to do that is because it's a negative, so to move it to the other side, I always change the sign. In the third one, 
I'm going to subtract the 15x to combine it with the negative 3x. For the bottom ones, we have to remember <coughs> uh, the distributive property. Okay. So 5, I want to run through real quick. It doesn't have the distributive property, but it does have variables on both sides. So remember when I'm moving one variable from one side to another, I'm always changing its sign. I can then combine any numbers that are left. So the negative 10 and the 3 were negative 7. I add 13 on both sides, then divide by 3, and I have my y. For my number four, that, that is the distributive property, when there's a number in front of the variable. And all it is is multiplying. So I'm multiplying both of those numbers. Now I combine my like terms, my x's, and then I'm just solving normally. So I would subtract the 50, and I have negative 48. Again, distributive property is multiplication. This one has multiple steps. So I have multiple t's. So what I do is I can actually combine the 6t and the 2t on that one side because they're on the same side. And I can combine the 21 and the 2 because they are like terms. Now I move that 3t over. I'm left with 23 equals 5t minus 2, add the 2, divide by 5, and I can get the answer, which is t equals 5. Remember to always box in your answer so I can make sure. So again, great examples on the top of these worksheets. They also uh, tell you to check your answer. Always check your answer. It always helps. So this one is special because when I combine my x's, they go away. They cancel each other out. And I get 2 equals 4, which is not true. So if that, is, that happens, there are no solutions. For my number 8, when I combine them, they don't cancel out. So I can solve it normally. And I get, and I divide by 4, I get x is 1. So x is a number. In my last example, I combine my, my g's, x's in this case, and they cancel out. 5 equals 5, which is true. So that means there are infinite amount of solutions. So when that happens, when the x's or the variables cancel out, you check if it's true or not. If it's true, it's infinite. If it's not true, there's no solution. So in these next couple, you're going to run into that a little bit. So choose six of those 12 and then do both of those word problems. Word problems are very important. The last step is solving for a variable. So it's the same process, same process, only you're just rewriting the equation. You're moving stuff from one side to the other. Okay. So it always says solve for an indicated variable. So S in this case for number one. So I just get rid of the four by dividing. Again, I'm rewriting it. So I don't get a solid number, I'm just rewriting the equation. For number two, I'm solving for B, so I have to get rid of the A, and I have to get rid of the C. So what I do on one side, I do on the other. So it just becomes 180 minus A minus C. Remember, I cannot combine them. For number three, 
you see a fraction. Whenever there's a fraction, make the other side a fraction and cross multiply. So what I get is K times T equals P times V. I get, now can solve for K by getting rid of the T. What's the opposite multiplying? Dividing. And again, all I'm doing is rewriting the equation. So I'm I'm not move I'm not solving I'm rewriting. Okay. In the next examples there are more with fractions and there's other examples of how to do it with fractions and solving for fractions. So for seven again put a one under the h cross multiply. One times f plus g is f plus g equals 2h. Solve for g means get rid of the f. So g ends up being 2h minus f. Again, rewriting it, getting rid of those fractions. So you'll get more practice on this. Again, word problems are very important. And after you're done, please complete this, this assessment. Make sure you're checking your answers on Google Classroom. And 